Hi there, this is Rick again. In this video we're going to do some uh, support drops of vehicles um, from parachutes. Um, so I'm standing at the base. I'll show you how it works and then we'll do this, show the script. So I've created some radio triggers. So I can drop an M1 Abrams tank or an MRAP or an IFE. You can choose whatever vehicle you want to drop. Uh, so let's drop a drop an MRAP. So we'll choose a particular spot on the map for the airdrop. Let's drop it on the runway. So we see at the top right it says vehicle drop mark position ETA one mic. So if I look here, it specifies who called the drop and where the drop's going to be. Um, this is important because you may have multiple players calling drops in different places and uh, at least now they'll know exactly where their vehicle will drop. So uh, we wait one minute and with a bit of luck somewhere down here we're going to get the vehicle dropping. The important thing is that when you drop a vehicle you choose a, a logical place for it given that there's uh, issues to take take into account such as the wind although in the script I actually switch the wind off briefly while the drop is taking place but uh, Bizfunk uh, finds safe position calculates a position based on ter terrestrial objects in other words terrain objects it doesn't calculate the position based on okay so you heard the plane go past and the vehicle has been dropped um, it doesn't calculate the position based on map placed objects uh, or editor placed objects. So you have to be a little bit careful where you choose to drop your vehicle. Uh, otherwise you'll get a bit of a surprise from the suppliers. Now certain vehicles, uh, these are RHS vehicles, um, for some reason the collision mesh seems to put the vehicle below the ground. You can see that's what happens. So I, in the script, it, it protects the vehicle while it's in the process of landing and then it resets it above the terrain um, just slightly and then drops it back and then switches the damage back on again. Um, so, and it leaves the marker so that I can actually go and find the, the vehicle. So it'd be a bit uh, stupid if it removed the, the marker prematurely. So I'm going to show you how that works from a script point of view. So obviously you could you could run the script you could run the script uh, on a like I'm doing here with a radio trigger or you could run it on a, on a map or on a notice board or on a flagpole or something like by adding this to an add action. So in this case um, I created a trigger. I put down some text which which will be the text you'll see when you call the radio trigger. You call the radio triggers using zero zero. Um, it's repeatable. In this case I chose Radio Charlie because I'm using Alpha and Bravo and a script has two uh, variables that it passes to the script. Um, the player that called the script and the actual vehicle that you want to drop. You can get this class from um, very easily. Let's say you want to drop a, I don't know, an M1232. You just plonk that down and then if you right click on the object you can say log class to clipboard and there's your class it's important that you put inverted commas around it so in your in the, in the script you would say player comma and then just put a little inverted commas put the class name in here paste it in and close it okay so now in the script which is not very long. Um, checks to see if the if it's running on the server and if it 
isn't running on the server, it exits. Uh, you can change the drop height. You can uh, specify the total number of drops allowed. And then the first thing it does is it checks to see if if this drop, if we add one to the drop number, and that's greater than the number of total drops, then it will exit the script and say drop limit exceeded. You could say support drop limit exceeded or whatever you want to change the text to. And then um, picks up the first variable that was passed from the script, which is select zero, which will be player. And then select one will be the vehicle type, which is this bit here. It then says, hence to the screen, click on the map to select the drop position. It open, sorry, it opens the position, opens the map. It sets a variable re relocate drop to false. And then on map single click, um, it puts the position where you clicked on the map into relocate click pause into that variable. Um, it says relocate drop is true, so yes, we have clicked on the map. It stops further clicks on the map and passes true back to this function. And then it waits until either relocate drop is true, or is yeah is true, or the view, or the map has been closed. If you close the map, in other words, if the the map is no longer visible. It'll exit the script and post a hint to the screen saying drop cancelled and then break out of the script. If that condition is um, ignored because you did in fact click on the map, closes the map um, and then it basically um, sets a marker position drop pause, it sets the marker to alpha, in other words it makes it visible, um, it then sets the marker text, so basically it gets the name of the unit which was passed to the script, so in my case it will be Mike, it will say um, it picks up that variable and puts it into this text. So the marker text will be mic drop. So then it adds one to the drop number. It public variables that, so all the clients on the network will have the same drop number. It plays a little beep sound, so it gives you reinforcement that you clicked on the map. It'll sleep for a second, and then it will Post, a, post a, a hint to the screen saying vehicle drop on mark position ETA one minute or one mic. Um, you can obviously adjust this if you want it to, to be a five minute delay or a three minute delay or whatever. It then switches the, sets the wind to zero and forces that across the network. Um, it simulates a flyby of a C-17 using remote exec and it plays the sound so it will, all the clients will hear the sound of a plane flying overhead. It sleeps for five seconds and then it basically adjusts the drop target that position that you where you clicked on the map uh, to allow for the slope of the terrain and um, map clutter. So obviously don't try and drop a vehicle in the middle of a town or something where there's a lot of map objects. So it says the position and it passes and it gets it checks for a fire it, <clears throat> sorry it's, it runs a function called bizfunk find safe position so the first uh, uh, her first um, element in the array is position which is the center where you clicked the um, minimum distance from the center the maximum distance from the center in meters the um, the distance from any other object uh, whether or not it can drop, whether it's allowed to drop in water, in this case no. Um, uh, oh, sorry, and then uh, no word, uh, then max gradient, uh, sorry that was max gradient. 
Yes, is, uh, and if it has to make an adjustment from the position that's currently selected, it will hint to the screen. Um, then drop pose, set marker position, position. So it puts the marker where you clicked, or the new position. Um, it then creates a, a vehicle position based on the position that was reset from find Bisfunk's find safe position. And it adds the height. Um, in this case, the height we specified right at the beginning, uh, or did we? Yes, we did, drop height. And then what it does is it creates a vehicle of vehicle type. The vehicle type was picked up from the second variable in the script at the vehicle position. It can collide, the shoot, create, and then it creates a parachute, or a specific um, large parachute that's used for vehicle drops at the vehicle position and this particular object can fly um, it then attaches uh, the vehicle to the chute with an offset of two meters and sends a message to the screen saying heads up literally because if you're not looking where you're going you're going to get squashed that's happened to quite a few of the players actually already it's quite funny um, okay, so then uh, it switches off damage for the vehicle. Okay, so then it waits until the chute has been deleted, which will happen automatically once it once it hits the ground. Um, it then lifts the vehicle off the ground by two meters. Um, and the, as I said, the reason for this is because occasionally certain vehicles, for some reason, their um, geometry mesh, I don't know, is either a fault or the map has got a geometry mesh problem, but the vehicle ends up going under the ground. And I think it's kind of reason for that is because of the distance between the chute and the vehicle and the center point that it sometimes calculates the is touching ground position. And it actually is offset by a few meters, a couple of meters from the center of the combined object of the parachute in the vehicle. So it basically lifts the vehicle up again. The vehicle will then, due to the physics, will drop down onto the ground. And then it resets it to a vertical position through the Z axis. Sleeps for half a second, switches the damage back on on the vehicle. And then, and then brings the wind back to the current wind uh, velocity settings and forces that uh, wind setting across the network and then clears when whatever hints are still on the screen. So basically that's how it works. Um, you could obviously embellish this a lot by adding special sound effects of ra you know, pilots or whatever communicating when you click on the map and, and the the drop has been confirmed. You could all you could add a whole lot of different uh, sort of subtleties to this. Um, I could have made it far more uh, advanced by actually putting a plane in the sky and dropping the dropping the vehicle out of the plane and so on. But this is really designed to try and keep the or to minimize the number of mods that you specifically need. So you don't need to run uh, any mods. In fact, if you choose a vanilla uh, vehicles uh, that you're going to drop. So it's a relatively simple script um, and it's quite functional and quite useful. Um, so I hope that was of benefit to you and uh, if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe um, and make, uh, make it a little bit easier for me to make these videos because there's quite a lot of work involved. So thank you very much for watching.